Good morning, everyone. Happy Sabbath. Pastor Mike Contis of the Stockton Central Seventh-day Adventist Church. I am excited to be with you here once again on this December, cold December morning, December 26, 2020. Let us have a word of prayer and we're going to get back to the second part of our sermon that we are on, Wise Men Still Seek Him. Wise Men Still Seek Him. Let us pray. Father, we thank thee for the opportunity of being here today. And uh, Lord, I ask that you hide me beneath the cross. May your word be uplifted. May we understand you better. May we desire to follow you closer. Send thy angels to enlighten our hearts and minds. In Jesus' name, amen. So, a little bit of review, just about a minute of review. Last time we looked on uh, uh, the gospel of Matthew, and we're going to go back to there. Matthew chapter 2 is where we started. I'm going to read to you the scripture, and I'll give you a summary of the points that we made, and then we're going to go plow ahead. Matthew chapter 2 we read, and it said, verse 1, it said, Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. And obviously the sermon title was Wise Men and Wise Women Still Worship Jesus Today. Still seek Him today. Wise men and wise women seek Jesus today. And the point number one that we made last week is God's word is true in this passage. And the reason why it's true is because when the wise men came from the east, we know that the prophet Micah chapter 5 verse 2 predicted Several hundred years before Jesus was born, where he was going to be born? In the town of Bethlehem in Judea. And there's many other prophecies that have been fulfilled, but specifically dealing with the one in this context. And we also found out that the wise men had to have been contacted with someone from the east in the scriptures. And we believe, as tradition has it, that the prophet Balaam, who was a good prophet in the beginning and then went sour passed the scrolls and the scriptures to these wise men. They're not magi like magicians. These were like wise men, the philosophers of the day of where they came from. And they were, as they read the scriptures, they read that the king of the Jews was to be born and they wanted to come and worship the king of the Jews because what he was going to do, how he was going to be the Messiah of the world. And so they came. And we talked about how we have a responsibility to seek Jesus ourselves. We looked at Matthew 7, Matthew chapter 7, verses 7 and 8, and it says, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, it will be opened. And then in Jeremiah 29 13 it read and you will seek me and you will find me when you search me with all your heart I will be found by you says the Lord there's a part that we need to seek out God and so that was the first phase of what we looked at so we're going to get back into the story we're going to get back into the wise men and remember the wise men didn't stay home they actually got out and they went seeking I'd like to read to you a quote from the wonderful book Desire of Ages this is what it says the wise men had seen a mysterious light in the heavens upon that night when the glory of God flooded the hills of Bethlehem. As the light faded, a luminous star appeared and lingered in the sky. It was not a fixed star nor a planet, and the phenomenon excited the keenest interest. That star was a distant company of shining angels. Now, I want to pause there for just a second before I go. There was angels that were singing, hark the herald angels sing that Jesus has come. Look how good God is. He sends angels to a fixed place where the universe now is praising that Jesus has come. And we talked about last time even where are the religious leaders, where is the church people? Nowhere to be found. What a big rebuke, right? Let us go on. The star was a distant company of shining angels, but of this the wise men were ignorant. Yet they were impressed that the star was of special import to them. 
They consulted priests and philosophers and searched the scrolls of ancient records. The prophecy of Balaam had declared, there shall come a star out of Jacob and a scepter shall arise out of Israel. Numbers 24, 17. Could this strange star have been sent as a harbinger of the promised one? The Magi had welcomed the light of heaven sent truth. Now it was shed upon them in brighter rays. Through dreams, they were instructed to go in search of the newborn prince. Okay, we're going to pause and we're going to make a point here. Notice where it said there that this harbinger, they realized that it was looked like it was of God and what they wanted to do is seek out deeper light. Point number one, when God gives you light, you and I are to go deeper and to search that light. We're not to be satisfied with just status quo. We're not to be satisfied with just, well, everyone else does it. I'm just going to go along. Listen, even though the Bible calls us sheep, we're not sheep to be led to the slaughter. We're sheep to be led by Jesus Christ. And the Bible says in John 10, you, they, my sheep will hear my voice and they will follow me. We need to make sure that we're following Jesus' voice, going into a deeper and deeper relationship with him. Your relationship with your spouse should be deeper if you've been together with your spouse for 15 years than it was the first week, the first month, in the first year. And if you don't believe me, go ask your spouse and you'll know. They will tell you that. You should have a deeper, stronger, intimate relationship with your spouse. Same thing with Jesus. We are to seek out the truths that he reveals. That's what the Magi did. That's why they're to be so admired. They got up and left everything. In fact, they're kind of like a symbol of what Abraham did. God in Genesis chapter 12 came across Abraham and he said, Get thee out of thy country with thy kindred and I will take you to where I have promised you if Abraham never would have left he never would have been the man that is called the father of the faithful sometimes you and I are called to leave I never intended follow me I never intended to leave my Greek Orthodox background I was raised in the Greek Orthodox Church for those of you who do not know in Catholicism there are two branches of Catholicism you have the Church of the West which is your Roman Catholic Church. And then you have your Church of the East, which is your Eastern Orthodox Churches, with Greek Orthodox being the oldest. And then you have Russian and Serbian and Coptic and so on. And I was raised in the Eastern branch of Catholicism. Uh, the Eastern branch and the Western branch, very similar, more similar than they are uh, where they have their disputes, very similar. But I was raised in that culture. If you would have told me as a young man I would have left the Greek Orthodox Church, I wouldn't have believed you. But I'm going to share something with you. As I started studying the Word of God, God had a different journey for me to be on. And I can tell you my life has been blessed since I've become a Seventh-day Adventist Christian in 1997. My wife and I, August 23rd of 1997, were baptized. We must seek God and come out of our comfort zone and be willing to leave all things behind if we're to follow God, right? The Bible, the rich young ruler, Jesus told him, the rich young ruler said, I have everything, I've done all these things. Jesus told him he needed to do some things. He goes, I've done all these things. And then Jesus, Jesus struck at the core of everything. Then sell all that you have, give to the poor, and follow me. And he went away sad. I'll tell you what, I've not gone away sad. I've gone away happy following Jesus. Notice, this takes us next to our um, third point within this story. And the third point is, God is inclusive. Notice the wise men came. He didn't exclude them. Whether male or female, rich or poor, free or bond, Greek, Jew, Italian, Portuguese, Native American, Brit. God has a big umbrella and he wants you under it. You see... 
You and I are invited into intimacy with God. God has always had a plan to allow the Jews to be the light of the world to reach other nations, the Gentile nations. But they became so exclusive that they actually imploded and God needed to actually take a different direction with the gospel message. And this is the beauty of it in the Old Testament. Even the wise men were a part of it. And the reason why they were a part of it is because they saw the truth in God's word. They were willing to seek. They were willing to give all and come and come in contact with Jesus, the King of the Jews. Now, there were a couple lowly shepherds that Jesus did show himself, the angels, so to speak. Je uh, Jesus had, God the Father had angels and relayed to some shepherds that Jesus was born. But outside of that, very few of the chosen people even knew that Jesus was born and went to go see him, except for these wise men. Where were the religious leaders? Where were the people? Nowhere to be found. Listen closely. I, want to, I make my sermons always, uh, I try to relate it to the common day. Where were the pastors? Where were the evangelists? Listen, I'm going to say this. Where were the conference administrators? Where are the local church leaders? Nowhere to be found. God had to bring the outsiders. God had to bring the outsiders. Now, I remember when I was in high school, um, my senior year, 1985, I remember I saw this cute girl and I was on my way to track practice, but on my way to track practice, this cute girl was gonna go to the baseball game and I had a real big dilemma. My dilemma was to go to track practice or to skip, pra skip track practice and go to the baseball game where this cute girl was going. And the reason why is because we had our junior senior banquet that was coming up and I wanted to ask this girl if she would go with me to the junior senior banquet. And I was, I know some of you are going to laugh, but I was, uh, of, of the female gender, I had a fear of friends. I had a hard time uh, wanting to talk to this girl. It was just not in me. I was very shy type of a person, even though I was an outgoing type of a person, because I didn't want to ask her and then have her reject me. You follow me? Okay, I know some of you can relate to that. Anyway. Remember, I went to the baseball game and we're sitting down, we're watching the game together. And at the end of the game, she was walking off and I didn't have the courage to ask her. Can you believe it? And as she's walking off, I heard this voice in my mind say, you big dummy, you just lost your chance. Lo and behold, I called her name and said, hey, Reagan, come here a second. And she came back and I met her out in the middle of the baseball field and I asked her if she would go with me and she said yes. I had to go to the baseball game where I knew she was at. This is once again the main theme of the story with the wise men. The wise men had to go where Jesus was. They were compelled. They wanted to meet the king of the Jews. They wanted to meet the king of the Jews. And so notice it says there that they went to see the king of the Jews. And notice if you turn, let's go to verse 3. Matthew chapter 2, verse 3, it says this. When Herod the king, remember they, they, went, to the, they went to Herod, the first they went into Jerusalem and they asked, where's king of the Jews? They went to Herod. And it says, when King Herod heard this, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. Notice Jerusalem was up in a stir. And when he had gathered the chief priests and the scribes and the people together, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. So they said, in Bethlehem of Judea, thus was written by the prophet, but the Bethlehem in the land of Judea are you least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you shall a ruler um, come who will shepherd my people Israel. Verse 7. Then Herod, when he had secretly called the wise men, determined from them what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, go and search carefully 
for the child. When you have found him, bring back word for me that I may come and worship him also. And, and, they, and they heard the king and they departed. And behold, the star which they had been seeing in the east went before them till they came and stood over the young child where he was and they saw the star. They rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. That was verse 10. I'm going to pause. I'm going to pause right there at verse 10. We're going to continue. So notice, they went to Herod, and I'm going to make another big, huge point, very important. Notice the next point. When the wise men came to Jesus, they had what? They had great joy when they found Jesus. I will tell you today, if we as a church had much joy, our church would grow just because of joy. I'm talking all around. If people were more joyful and they weren't always so down, if people were, weren't so joyless, can you imagine if it was a church and we were genuinely happy to be saved because what God has done and we were genuinely happy to see each other and we were genuinely happy to serve God, how contagious that would be? In fact, let me... Let me say it this way. So many people today, when they come to church, they look at the church and they seem like the church is in sorrow. We're mourning. When we should be thankful. The wise men came, they found Jesus and they were excited. You know, I can relate to this because I remember when I gave my heart to Jesus and I uh, I was, man, I tell you, I was going to church and I was sharing things with people at church. I was telling them about, you know, what Jesus had done for me and how the Ten Commandments still exist. And these are people that have known the Ten Commandments existed. They were raised in the church. They knew that the Ten Commandments were important. I'm running around. I'm telling them how important the commandments are. And they're looking at me like I'm crazy because what had happened is these truths had brought me joy and they brought me peace, knowing that I could trust God. I think a lot of people, many of us, many people, the reason why we don't have any joy is because we really don't trust God and we've been trusted in our own merits. And if you trust in yourself, there comes to a place where you have no joy because there's nothing really to be joyful about. But you know what? When you look at Jesus, you can see how joyful we could all be. Right? I mean, this is so important. So notice, I want to say, look what happens when you give your heart to Jesus Joy and the fruits of the Spirit come into your life. I want to read to you a quote here from the book Steps to Christ. Talking about how Jesus' life was when he was a young man. His heart was a wellspring of life. And wherever he went, he carried rest and peace, joy and gladness. Wherever he went, he had what? Rest, peace, joy and gladness. Speaking of Jesus, right? Huge. The religion of Jesus gives peace like a river. It does not quench the light of joy. It does not restrain cheerfulness, nor, cloudy, nor cloud the sunny, nor cloud the sunny smiley face. Christ came not to be ministered unto, but to minister to. And when his love reigns in the heart, we shall follow exam his example, which means that we should have joy and gladness and happiness in our own lives. So many people don't know what it's like to claim the promises of God and to be cleansed from guilt and shame. Thus, they walk around with their guilt and shame, trying by their own works to become clean, and they're miserable. Even people in the church, there'll be people in the church and they will be miserable because they've not come in contact with Christ. Now friends, I want to challenge you. I want to challenge all of us today that if you have some real struggles to be, now that doesn't mean you have to go hop, skip, and jump everywhere you go and talk to everyone, but you should be the type of person, you and I should be the type of person like Jesus was, where wherever we go, we have a rest, we have a peace, we have a joy, we have a gladness that we pass on to others. And if we don't have that, you know what? I question whether we've ever come in contact with Jesus. Notice. 
In fact, let me sum that part up by just saying this. Most people don't have joy and gladness because they've never experienced the second birth. Let me just say it that way. John chapter 3 with Nicodemus, Jesus says, and I'll share with you, you must be born again. Not you might be born again, you must be born again. And I will tell you that these magi were born again to be able to let things go. They committed to following, to find who this king of the Jews, the savior of the world was to be. They had a second birth. That's why they had joy. And I'll tell you, I love being around people that have that kind of joy. It is a huge blessing. Notice, let's go on in the passage. They had great joy. They stood in front of Jesus and notice they didn't say to each other when they were, this is, this is good. They didn't, they, when they were standing there in front of Jesus, they didn't tell Mary and Joseph, you know what? It took us three weeks to get here. It took us three months to get here. We can't believe it. You know how hard it was to get? We had to pay two toll booths. I had to go over the Antioch Bridge. I had to come on Charter 4 to come down and to see Jesus. They weren't sharing their complaints. They were joyful. They were joyful. I love that part. And notice another thing. Let's go on in verse 11. And it says, And when they had come into the house, they saw the young child with his mother and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented gifts to him. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Okay. Next part. Next point. When we come to God, we have something to bring. We have something to bring. Now I'm going to talk about, uh, this is tough for some people, but it is true. When we come to God, we need first and foremost to give Him our hearts. Amen? That's what He asks for. We give Him our hearts. If God gets your heart, if God gets my heart, He has everything else. He has everything else. That's why these wise men wanted to give God their best. And we're going to expound on this. We're coming to a, uh, we're going to be coming to a close here in our sermon. We're going to go into part three here in just a little bit. So I just want to give you a little bit of a summary before I jump into the next part. You're going to, I'm going to, you're going to have to come back to the, and watch the next Sabbath. How does that sound? A little teaser there for you. Notice. Point number one, which is the main point of the whole thing, they had to seek Jesus. They had to follow the light that was given to him. When God sheds light upon you, you are to follow it. I am to follow it. Point number two is that there's joy. When you come to Jesus, you are blessed with joyfulness, gladfulness, gratefulness, thankfulness. And that changes your disposition forever. You could be in the midst of chaos and you can still have joy. Isn't that crazy? The world can't handle joy. Um, we're going to end today with this story. I remember we were uh, in the hospital for five days after my daughter was diagnosed with her brain cancer. And I went to go get her prescription that they had for her at the pharmacy. And I was standing in line. It was a pretty long line. It was about nine people in front of me. And I remember watching this uh, young couple walk in. They are in their early teens, or I should say um, late teens, early 20s. And they, they saw the line and they started getting real upset and very impatient. They were like, I can't believe this line is so long. And I had been standing in line for the longest time. And you could say they, they were like saying, oh, you know, I really need this prescription because my mom has the flu and I can't be here. And you know, I... A flu is not anything to sneeze at. Pun, 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 pun. Notice, and I was in line, and I felt like saying to him, why don't you just get in line? I go, you know, my daughter was just diagnosed with brain cancer. Inside of me, I wanted to say that. But I'm going to share with you, when you're in the world and you don't know Jesus, you can't have gladness and peace. When you are born again, even in the most turmoil, chaotic circumstances, God gives you peace. And He gives you gladness. And so that is, the, that is on this part two, the summary of today's sermon. 
And as we're going to close, I'm going to have prayer here for you. How many here want to say you want to follow God in deeper truths? Right? How many here want to say, I want to be a more thankful. I want to be glad. I want to be a joyful Christian. Right? That's all of us. Let us pray. Father, we come to thee now and we thank thee for the opportunity of life that you have given us. May we be more joyful and may we be willing to follow you in your truths. Guide, lead, and direct us in all things. Help us to be faithful and honorable in thy sight. May we be like the wise men who are willing to leave everything to find Christ. In Jesus' name, amen.